Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh kepada grup uh, 3D. So, pertamanya Madam nak meminta maaflah kepada uh, grup 3D sebab macam terabaikan kamu semua and then rupa-rupanya satu 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 ni pun tak tak, tak dan lagi kan. Uh, sometimes sebab kelas 3C and then 3D Lepas tu sampai Meda rasa macam di kelas 3C dulu Jadi menyebabkan Meda rasa macam apa Meda dah cakap benda tu Punya Meda cakap dengan kelas 3C So itulah kadang-kadang ya Itulah manusia yang banyak kelemahan Okay so Okay so pada malam ni kita akan menyaksikan tiga presentation lah So jangan lupa untuk uh, take attendance Okay supaya semua dapat Inilah kita buat kelas replacement kiranya dua kelas lah untuk malam ni Okay uh, tanpa menangguhkan lagi masa kita start dengan presentation yang pertama Tapi sebelum itu Meda nak tengok dulu orang kata uh, Ni lah uh, Meda nak tengok dulu uh, rubrik Okay so rubrik yang pertama uh, So sepatutnya okay grup mana dulu ni Okay uh, Grup mana dulu yang nak present ni? Jangan kita tengok kat sini. Huda Husna grup apa? Grup Huda Husna. Uh, grup yang kedua, Madam. Grup pertama uh, dulu. Ah, uh, okey. Uh, apa nama ni? Grup pertama apa nama dia punya ni? Tajuk assignment? Pasal YDPA ke? YDPA kan? YDPA grup satu, Madam. Ah okey YDPA grup 1 and then yang ni uh, grup yang kedua grup apa? Ah uh, grup the ministries and the portfolio of Malaysian cabinet at the new under Datuk Seri Mat Sabri. Okay, Malaysian cabinet. Right. Okey yang dan yang ketiga Dewan Rakyat. Dewan Rakyat. Uh -uh, Dewan Rakyat. Alright. So nanti bolehlah letak apa orang kata uh, nama lah uh, isikan detail dekat semua-semua ni supaya medium boleh ni lah. Okay, dekat rubrik ni. Okay. Dewan Rakyat. So kita nak start malam ni dengan grup mana? YDPA lah boleh? Chapter 1. Group YDPA Madam. Alright. Okay. Mana? Atika Jasmine ke? Or group 1? Okay. Okay sekejap. Assalamualaikum and good morning to Natural Madam Nofarizah binti Johari. Today we will present our report entitled Describe the Functions of Yang Di-Pertuan Agong as Malaysian Head of State. Before that, I will introduce my group members. The first is me, Atikah binti Jasmine, 2020820826. Next, Nur Jessica binti Casey, 2020820042. And the last one is Siti Hajar binti Shamsir Rizal 2020610666. In this slide, we will present to you the function of Yang Dipeta Agu in each body of government, which are executive, legislature and judiciary. We will explain points by points that we have searched and also learn throughout the class. Next, there are three executive functions of Yang Dipertuan Agong. The first is to appoint a prime minister. 
in the appointment of the Prime Minister based on the powers enshrined under Article 42A and the concept of a constitutional monarch, the Yang Dipertuan Agong may use its discretionary power to appoint an individual who has the support of a majority in the one riot as Prime Minister at his discretion. The application of this power can be seen when the issue of political unrest just occurred in 2020, which has tested the discriminatory power of the Yang Dipertuan Agong. The 14th general election on 10 May 2018 has great national history for the first time in Malaysia, so the victory of the coalition party Pakatan Harapan PH consisting of Persatu, Amanah, Keadilan and DAP has managed to bring down the 62 years stronghold held by Barisan National Party. The new dimension of the Prime Minister's appointment came as the PH coalition leaders signed a statutory declaration making their agreement to unanimously united Tun Tum Hadi as the new Prime Minister at the time. Once again marks a new historical sketch when Tun Dr. Mahadi was appointed by the Yang Dipotran Agong for the second time as the seventh Prime Minister of Malaysia. However, his story continued to be etched when Tun Dr. Mahadi decided to resign in February 2020. So, the Yang Dipotran Agong once again helped to resolve the issue of the appointment of a new Prime Minister. The crisis ended when the Tan Sri Mahyudin Yassin was appointed the 8th Prime Minister on 29 February 2020 using the prerogative of the Yang Dipertuan Agong. In the appointment of the 8th Prime Minister, the Yang Dipertuan Agong used the method previously used by the Sultan of Perak in 29 in deciding the calculation of the actual majority. As a key individual in the constitution, the Yang Dipertuan Agong has the power to make important decisions not only in accordance with the constitution but also in accordance with acts of parliament. The second is has discretionary power in the dissolution of parliament. Based on Article 55, this has stated that the Yang Dipertuan Agong has the power to dissolve parliament. Dissolution of parliament is a popular term to indicate the mandate handed back to the people to elect the government of their choice through a general election process. There are two circumstances to assess whether parliament should be dissolved or not under the decision of the Yang Dipertuan Agong under the provision of the federal constitution. The first is the common practice when the Yang Dipertuan Agong is advised by the prime minister to dissolve parliament when the term of office as prime minister has approached five years. Second, the request of the Prime Minister who lost due to a vote of no confidence by members of the House of Representatives. The dissolution of Parliament will take place if a Prime Minister at that time no longer has the confidence of the majority of two per three of the members of the Dewan Rakyat. However, there are exceptions in the issue of advice or request to dissolve Parliament. The Yang Dipertuan Agong has the discretion under Article 4 to be not to grant a request for the dissolution of parliament. In short, the issue of the dissolution of parliament arises when the Yang Dipertuan Agong considered to the advice of the cabinet or the prime minister as the head of the cabinet. The third is to grant pardon and adjournment in respect of all offense. The Yang Dipertuan Agong has the power to grant pardon or defer a sentence in connection with all offences that have been tried by a court martial or in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan, and Putrajaya. The King or Yang Dipertuan Negeri of a state also has the power to grant pardon for all other offences committed in the state. This is because, in accordance with Clause 10, which is without prejudice to any provision of federal law relating to the remission of punishment for good conduct or substances of peace, any power conferred by a federal law or state law to remit, suspend or commute that sentence for any offence may be carried out by the Yang Dipertuan Agong if the sentence has been passed by a court martial or a civil court exercising jurisdiction in the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya. For example, a politician, Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim, was granted a pardon from the Yang Dipertuan Agong, Sultan Muhammad V, for his wrongdoing. The Yang Dipertuan Agong granted the pardon because Datuk Seri Anwar insisted that he did not seek pardon for the offence he had been convicted of, but instead demanded 
brought Canadian for defamation and abuse of power as well as matters contrary the principles of justice. Next is the function of YDPA in legislature. The first point is writing the bill. He has the power to approve the law as he is also a part of legislature. In the lawmaking process, there will be a bill created and thoroughly face the process before officially become a law. YDPA will take part as the bill meets his royal assent. Royal assent is a matter which is a monarch will formally approve an act of the legislature either directly or officially acting. Once a bill got granted, it become law and come into force in that day. It will be given 13 days for the YDPA to grant it. However, if his Highness didn't grant it within the day, it will become an act. The next point is the YDPA's power on parliament. He gives speeches on both houses of parliament. It shall be out of order to anticipate a discussion on the matter of a bill, standing on the order of business or matter which has been made known the day it will be debated. Secondly, the authority that he has to terminate or dissolve the power. The king, as head of state, the senate and the house of representatives has the authority to dismiss the parliament. Article 55 of the federal constitution stated that the king has the absolute power to dissolve the parliament. And lastly, the authority that YDPA has to disqualify any member of parliament. Any member of parliament can get disqualified if either he declared to be unsound of mind, undischarged bankrupt, or become a member of any legislature. Lastly, the YDPA can appoint a member of Senate. The senator must be 30 years and above and also get appointed on advice of prime minister. There will be 44 in amount, which is two from Kuala Lumpur, one from Zabuan, one from Putrajaya, and 14 the rest. Lastly, there are four judicial functions of the Anipertanago. Firstly, is to appoint the judges of Federal Court, Court of Appeals, and the judges of High Court. Uh, according to Article 122B1, Yang Pertuan Ago shall appoint the Chief Justice of the Federal Court, President of the Court of Appeals, Chief Justice of the High Court in Malaya, Chief Justice of the High Court in Sabah and Sarawak, Judges of the Federal Court, Judges of the Court of Appeals, and Judges of High Court. However, Yanni Pertuan Ago must on the advice on, of the Prime Minister and of the constellation with the conference of reader before tendering his advice as to the appointment under Clause 1 of a judge other than the Chief Justice of the Federal Court, the Prime Minister shall consult the Chief Justice. Before tendering his advice as to the appointment under Clause 1 of the Chief Judge of a High Court, the Prime Minister shall consult the Chief Judge of each of the High Courts. And if the appointment is to the High Court in Sabah and Sarawak, the Chief Minister of each of the states of Sabah and Sarawak. Last one is before tendering his advice as to the appointment under Clause 1 of a judge other than the Chief Justice, President or a Chief Judge. The Prime Minister shall consult if the appointment is to the Federal Court, the Chief Justice of the Federal Court. If the appointment is to the Court of Appeals, the President of the Court of Appeals. And if the appointment is to one of the High Court, the Chief Judge of that Court. Number two, to appoint the Judicial Commissioner. According to Article 122B1, the Young Department Ago, acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, after consult uh, consultations, uh, the Chief Judge of the Federal Court to appoint to the Judicial Commissioner for, for such period of such purposes as may be specified in the order any person eligible for appointment as a judge of a high court and the person so appointed shall have power to perform such function of a judge of the high court as appear to him to require to be performed.
and anything done by him when acting in accordance with his appointment shall have the same validity and effect as if done by a judge of that court. And in respect thereof, he shall have the same powers and enjoy the same immunities have been a judge of that court. Point number three. Uh, Yang Di Persuan Agong has the power to ascend the judge's service. According to Article 1251, Yang Di Persuan Agong could ascending the service of a judge over 65 years old, uh, and the extension of the service does not exceed six months after reaching the age of 65 years. Subject to the provisions of Clause 2 to 5, a judge of the federal court shall hold office until he attains the age of 65 years or such later time, not being later than six months after he attains, attains the age as the Yang Dipertuan Agong may approve. The last point uh, of judicial function is Yang Dipertuan Agong does not have power to remove a judge at will. According to Article 1253, the Yang Dipertuan Agong does not have a power to remove a judge, a judge at will. Only through a representation made by the Prime Minister or the Chief Justice and after receiving the reports of the tribunal, so Yang Dipertuan Agong can remove a judge from, uh, from office. If the Prime Minister or the Chief Justice after consulting the Prime Minister represents to the Yang Dipertuan Agong that a judge of the federal courts ought to be removed on the ground or of any breach of any provision of the Code of Ethics prescribed under Clause 3 or on the grounds of inability from infirmity of body or mind or any other cause properly to discharge uh, the function of his office. The Yang Pertuan Agong shall appoint a tribunal in accordance with clause 4 and refer to the representations to it and may on the recommendations of the tribunals remove the judge from office. In the conclusion, it is clear that every function of the Yang Dipertuan Agong is very important to govern a country because the Yang Dipertuan Agong is the head of state. Although the position of the rulers is placed as the topmost administrative structures in Malaysia, they are still subject to the federal constitution. As the supreme law that forms the basis of every law and all Malaysian citizens, everything is for the benefit and well-being of all communities and country to continue to be safe and harmonious. Being among the parliamentary democracy, the concept of a constitution monarch and a monarchian system is very important to understand so that the country remains stable ruled by the young different point ago. Okay, thank you group one. Okay, so uh, I like uh, the way how they differentiate the functions of the YDPA according to uh, the three branches of government. Cuma Mandy nak komen tadi, introduction tak ada. Dia terus kepada function. Okay, and then macam in terms of presentation skill, you need to be more, apa orang kata, uh, janganlah membaca sangat. But clear. And then ada beberapa perkataan yang pronunciationnya agak agak kurang tepat lah contohnya macam monarch uh, kamu pronounce a monarch ah macam tu kan yeah, it should be monarch monarch and then occur so sometimes kalau kita tak kita tak berapa certain dengan satu-satu uh, apa bunyi ke apa kan ah kita boleh sebenarnya google dulu okey dengar tak media cakap ni Dengar medium. Ah, okay. Monarch. A pronunciation. Okay. Hmm. Hey. My job is to make Monarch. college easy. Monarch. Okay. 
Monarch. Ah. Eh, tapi bukan CH lah. Okay, bukan Monarch. Okay, ni British. American. Monarch. Ah, Monarch. Monarch. Okay. So, kita bolehlah kalau American, kalau British. Monarch. Monarch. <laughs> kalau American. Monarch. Monarch. Okay, biasanya Madam sebut monarch lah. Walaupun kita ni British English tapi kita sentiasa terpengaruh dengan uh, uh, American punya pronunciation lah. Sebab kita pakai tengok cerita Amerika kot. Uh, but then it's K. It's not C, C tu tak bunyi. Okay. Monarch. Okay. Alright. Uh, itulah yang Madam nak tegur sikit-sikit lah. Okay. Pasal pronunciation. Okay. Contoh satu lagi Madam dengar juga perkataan Oka tadi. Ah, uh, Occur. Occur. Ah, uh, dengar okay, okay tadi. Okay, so kena baiki lah. Okay, sebab tak mahu nanti pun nak ambil muat kan. Okay, kejap. Okay, kepada rubrik untuk yang di Pertuan Agong. Okay, so media akan bagi markah untuk grup yang di Pertuan Agong. So, please ya, lepas ni letakkan nama kamu dan nombor student kat sini lah. Letaklah grup nombor satu. Okay. Semut dulu. Group one. Okay. And then isi korang je kan. Ha, letaklah nama tadi. Okay. Introduction. Uh, Meda beri satu lah sebab tak ada. Okay. So bila tak ada tu jadi tak nak pergi markah lah. Okay. Okay. Key concept. Okay. Very good. Uh, good lah. Nak menengok lah. Ha, cuba kamu tak terangkan apa itu uh, yang, yang di Pertuan Agung apa semua sepatutnya ianya boleh di, diterangkan lah sebenarnya. Ya. And then transitions tu okey lah kita boleh nampak lah uh, dia punya uh, next next tu lah. Okey. And then conclusion pun Okay, conclusion okay. Cuma tak tulis. Tulis gambar je. Okay. Haa, oh, tegur macam ni lah. Senang. Haa, oh, senang. Nampak sikit markah ni. Okay. And then secara generalnya mana nak cakap apa eh. Hmm, secara generalnya boleh bagi, 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 boleh bagi good lah. Okay, representation ni cuma nanti supaya lebih bersahaja lagi presentation tu ya. So kita buat berapa markah kita boleh bagi? 4, 8, 12, 4 tambah 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 14, 15, 16. 16 ke kelak? Guys, 16 ke? 16 ke? Betul tak? Betul atas medium. Ah betul lah tu. Ah itulah macam agak rendah lah sebab bawah 20. Sebab tak ada introduction. Okay so so tapi jangan risau dan jangan sedih sebab kamu masih lagi boleh buat untuk writing writing pada writing skill. Ah so tengok semula format, equity format. Okay buat dengan baik. And then buat betul-betul ada introduction, ada isi dia. Isi dah okey sangat tadi. Ah and then ada conclusion. Dia memang macam tu, macam final lah. And then uh, buat uh, tulis supaya uh, sangat sistematik ya. Eh? Maknanya orang kata dia ada uh, turutan dia and then uh, uh, try, uh, systematically written and then originality. Okay. Dia faham kalau kamu nak ambil uh, sumber daripada internet tapi agak-agak lah. Uh, alright. So you can still score. Uh, for the writing skills. So nanti Madam nak tengok lah by next week dah siap report. Boleh ke kelas? Draft dah ada tu eh? Sekejap. Draft dah ada eh? Mana yang di Pertuan Agong? Mana draft? Yang ni ke? Yang ni ke? Terus group. Sekejap. Ada ke draft group one? Ada ke draft group one? Ah uh, Baris dua tu Madam. Nombor empat. Yang ni? Yang ni? Bar, uh, yang ni. Ha. Okay, sekejap yang tengok ya. Alright. Uh, introduction. Buatlah. Buatlah. Apa tu? What is YDPA? Okay. 
conference of rulers okay and then letaklah uh, uh, what article okay that says about IDPA in constitution all right right mm. to appoint a prime minister ha, yang ni okay yang ni memang tak ada masalah memang sangat suka macam mana kamu arrange uh, the 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 content orang kata dia the isi tu ha, badan gitu cuma tadi dia ada macam eh kenapa lah tak ada introduction sayang eh ha, okay so you still can score okay good job group one okay Uh, kita pergi kepada group 2 pula boleh ke okey jangan lupa tentang yang attendance ya okey semua dah ada ke tu 26 orang 26 orang muizudin mana muizudin ah tak ada dah muizudin tak tahu madam ah sibuk guna dah ah okey tak apa A window attack. Okay, the ministry. So, jump kita tengok pula presentation daripada uh, kawan kamu ni. My name is Nurul Firdaus Namtumisa. My student ID is 2020-60471. My name is Nur Shamimi Akila binti Zulkifli. My student ID 2020-81622. My name is Nur Shukriyatul Husna binti Abu Bakar. My student ID is 2020-458088. Today we are going to present about the ministries and the portfolio of Malaysian Cabinet 2021 under Datuk Sri Dr. Ismail Sabri. In this video, we are going to explain about the introduction, the portfolio of the ministries and the Malaysian Cabinet and also what we can conclude from the Cabinet. First and foremost, introduction. Malaysia's cabinet is the executive branch of the country's government. Next, the cabinet under Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri is a group or ministers who are all accountable to parliament. For your information, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri successfully become prime minister after gathering 114 of 220 members of the Warayat. Other than that, the cabinet consists of 32 ministers and 38 deputy ministers. Lastly, this cabinet also has the full support of PAS, BN, GPS, PBS and four independent lower house members. Next, we move to our first ministry which is Ministry of International Trade and Industry. YB Datuk Sri Muhammad Azbin Ali from Bersatu is the leader of MITI. KPDN also included in MITI. Generally, this department is about manufacturing and service sectors. Next, the objective of MITI is to provide Malaysia's rising workforce with innovative. Lastly, this diagram is about manufacturing and related services allowed to operate in lockdown which is the capacity only allowed 60% workforce. The second ministry is Ministry of Defence. This ministry is led by Datuk Sri Hishamuddin bin Tuni Hussein as supported by Ikma Hisham Abdul Aziz. Next, MINDEF is led by the Commander of Armed Force, ATM. The objective of MINDEF is to protect and defend the country interests. Lastly, this diagram is about MINDEF which is focuses on the mighty efforts of the welfare of ATM veterans. The third ministry that I will discuss is Ministry of Works. Datuk Sri Fadila Yusuf is the leader and Datuk Arthur Joseph Kurup is Deputy Minister. For your information, JKR is included in KKR Agency. The Ministry of Works is to oversee the construction, operation and maintenance of toll highways. Last but not least, This diagram shows that this department goals are to build federal road network that can improve people's quality life. The fourth ministry that I'm going to present is Ministry of Education. The minister is Datuk Muhammad Razi bin Muhammad Jidin and Datuk Dr. Mahansun and Muhammad Alamin 
both are as deputy ministers. The Ministry of Education are divided into eight. The function of KPM are to provide and place teacher in SI and SHG as needed. Next, the objective is to up uphold a great education system that can develop individuals to their potential. The fifth ministry is Economy under Prime Minister Department. The minister is YB Datuk Sri Mustafa bin Mohammed. For your information, the Academic Affairs portfolio is held by minister which is about the Economic Planning Unit EPU. The objectives are to plan socio-economic development in a holistic manner. Lastly, this diagram is about 12 pillaging plan which started 2021 until 2025. The sixth ministry that I'm going to discuss here is special functions under the Prime Minister Department. Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif bin Ahmad is Minister and Datuk Masura bin Muhammad Yazid is Deputy Minister. The function is decided by the main meetings of the government are included in special functions at the highest level involving national interests. The seventh ministry that I'm going to discuss here is Parliament and Law under Prime Minister Department. Berhormat yang Datuk Sri Wan Junaidi is the Minister and Datuk Mas Amriyati Samsudin as Deputy Minister. The function is to monitor the status of amnesty matters in each state. The eighth ministry is Religious Affairs under Prime Minister Department. Yang berhormat Senator Ustaz Haji Idris bin Ahmad is Minister and Datuk Ahmad Marzu bin Shari as Deputy Minister. The function is to ensure all 14 agencies under its supervision. Next, the objective is moving on the direction of the Malaysian Family Schools. The last department is Sabah and Sarawak Affairs Department that are leading by Datuk Sri Panglima Dr. Johnny Elias Maximus bin Ong Kili and Datuk Hajar Hanifa Hajar Taib as Deputy Minister. The establishment of this ministry is aimed at safeguarding the welfare and rights of the people at Sabah and Sarawak. Besides that, the department is also responsible to identify problems that occur and find solutions to settle the problems. It is also responsible to create more developments such as health facilities. Next, we move to Ministry of Finance that heading by Tunku Datuk Sri Utama Zafro bin Tunku Abdul Aziz and assisting by two deputy ministers which are Tuan Shah bin Abdullah and Tuan Yamani Hafiz bin Musa. The objective of this ministry is to ensure the effective financial implanting to our country and also ensuring the rights of our country divided fairly. Among the departments and agencies under this ministry is Malaysian National Bank, Malaysia Securities Commission and Bursa Malaysia Berhad. The functions of this ministry are to prepare the annual expenditure estimate, budget speeches, federal government's fiscal review report and revenue estimates that will be present in parliament on budget day. Next, we move to Ministry of Transportation that currently lead by Datuk Seri Dr. Irwi Kasong and Datuk Henry Sum Agong as Deputy Minister. The objective of this ministry are providing safe and comfortable transportation to the public. The ministry also needs to ensure that our citizens follow the rule of transportation and determining the new development using green technology. The functions are to formulate policies for transportation service. The project under this ministry will be controlled to start the project within one month after receiving the acceptance letter. Besides that, they are also responsible to process and approve transportation licenses such as application for a services license. On a quarterly basis, they need to provide statistically report among departments under this ministry are Department of Road Transport, Malaysian Aviation Commission, and Malaysian Maritime Institute, and lastly, Malaysia Rail Link Sembrian Berhad. Next, Ministry of Environment and Water. The Minister is Datuk Sri Tuan Ibrahim bin Tuan Man, and Deputy Minister is Datuk Mansur bin Haji Osman. The establishment of this minister are to ensure that water resources and environment manage in a balanced, efficient, and effective manner. The ministry functions to draft, implement and inspect the policy programs and methods such as the implementation of environmental projects using international funding and multilateral environmental agreements. The departments and agencies under this ministry are Malaysian Green Technology and Climate Change Centre, Department of Biosafety, Malaysian Meteorological Department and Environmental Department.
Next, Ministry of Human Resources that currently lead by Datuk Sri Saravanan and assisted by Datuk Haji Awang bin Hashim. The objective of this ministry are to preserve rights, safety and health of workers. Besides that, to create a skill well-maintained and functioning workforce for our nation. The functions of this ministry are to make updates on labor policies, safety policies, employee health laws and work environment. It also functions to create more employment opportunities and solve problems between employees and employers. Besides that, the agencies under their control are Department of Manpower, Social Security Organization and Skill Development Fund Corporation. Next, we move to Ministry of Federal Territory that was heading by Datuk Shahidan Qasim and assisted by Datuk Sri Jalaluddin bin Alias. The objective of this ministry is to generate sustainable economic growth through sustainable regional and federal development plans that will create more employment opportunities. The functions are to planning, managing, implementing, monitoring and evaluating sustainable progress and development for all federal ter territories. Besides that, it crucial in make Kuala Lumpur as the capital of Malaysia, Labuan as the business center and Putrajaya as the administrative center for our country. Departments and agencies under their control are Federal Regional Sport Council and Kampong Baru Development Corporation. Next, the Ministry of Women and Society that currently lead by Datuk Sri Rina Binti Muhammad Harun and Datuk Haja Siti Zailah Binti Muhammad Yusuf as Deputy Minister. The objective are to preserve rights and discrimination of women as special group such as all people and disabilities people. In established harmonious nation, it also depends on strong family institution. Hence, the establishment of this ministry will serve to empowering women and mainstreaming gender to achieve common sustainability. The departments under their control are Social Welfare Department, Women's Development Department, and Malaysian Social Institute. Next, we move to Ministry of High Education that led by Datuk Sri Nur Aini Ahmad and assisted by Datuk Dr. Ahmad Masizal Muhammad. The objective of this ministry is to provide high-quality study programs to people that lead competent and knowledgeable workers in future. It also being an intermediary to community and education institution. It is suitable with their functions that are announced the results of student admission application within 30 working days before the registration of new students to public universities, community college, and others. Besides that, they also will issue scholarship offer letters and approvals to private and public education institutions. The department under their control are National Higher Education Fund Corporation, Malaysian Qualification Agencies, and Education Malaysia Global Development. Now I want to proceed with the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources, KETSA. It's a ministry that is administered by YB Datuk Sri Takiyuddin bin Hassan. He was supported by the Deputy Minister, namely YB Datuk Ali Anak Biju. This ministry's objective is to spearhead sustainable electricity supply, industry and re natural resources governance of the well-being of the nation. This ministry responsible in managing electricity supply industry strategically by optimizing the renewable energy and energy efficiency to ensure reliable, affordable and sustainable electricity supply services. Other than that, this ministry also act in managing natural resource in an integrated manner based on efficient and optimal resource usage in accordance with national policies, regulations and international commitments. The, exa the example of agencies under this ministry such as uh, Minerals and Geoscience Department Malaysia, GMG, Perhilitan, and also Frim. The Ministry of Home Affairs, or MOHA, is a ministry that is administered by Datuk Sri Hamza bin Zainuddin. He is uh, supported by two deputy ministers, uh, which are YB Datuk Sri Dr. Ismail Mohamed Said and YB Tuan Janaga Yassin. The objective of this ministry is to ensure security and peace in the country is guaranteed and the well-being of the people is preserved. Among the functions of this ministry are such maintain safety and public order, rehabilitation and implementation of the punishment, manage registry affairs and manage immigration and foreign worker affairs. And the agencies under this ministry are 
National Registration Department, Royal Malaysian Police and also Immigration Department of Malaysia. The Ministry of Health Malaysia MOH is administered by YB Tuan Fahri Jamaluddin bin Abu Bakar. He is supported by two Deputy Minister of Health which are YB Datuk Dr. Haji Nur Azmi Fazali and Datuk Aaron Agudagang. This ministry objective is to assist an individual in achieving and sustaining as well as maintaining a certain level of health status to further facilitate them in leading a productive lifestyle economically and socially. The functions of this ministry is to formulate health policies. Besides that, MOH being directly involved in efforts to improve the standards of health service facilities in this country by providing equipment, expertise, infrastructure, and so on. Among the institutions or agencies that carry out roles under this ministry are National Blood Center, Institute of Public Health, National Cancer Institute, and also Medical Research Institute. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industry, MAFI, is administered by Dr. Sri Dr. Ronald Kiandi. He was supported by two deputy ministers, namely YB Datuk Sri Haji Ahmad Hamza and YB Dr. Nik Muhammad Zawawi Saleh. The purpose of the establishment of the ministry is to spearhead the transformation process within the agriculture sector via a planned, integrated and holistic approach based on an organizational collaborative effort in both intellectual and physical engagement towards realization of the national agri-food policy. Among the core functions of this ministry are such evaluate, coordinate and ensure the implementation of agriculture development programs and encourage domestic and foreign investment in the agri-food sector. The agencies under this ministry are such Margi, Pharma and Mad. Ministry of Rural and Regional Development is a ministry that is managed by YB Datuk Sri Mahathir bin Khalid and he was supported by two deputy ministers which are YB Datuk Abdul Rahman Muhammad and YB Datuk Haji Hasbi Habibullah. The objective of this ministry is to improve the quality of life and well-being of the rural community in a comprehensive and effective manner. Among the functions played by this ministry are planning and implementing socio-economic research programs for rural communities. The ministry intends to form a progressive society through consistent rural development. The example of agencies under this ministry uh, such are MARA and FECRA. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is a ministry uh, that is administered by YB Datuk Saifuddin bin Abdullah. The minister was supported by the deputy minister, namely YB Datuk Haji Kamaruddin Jaafar. The objective of the ministry is to uphold and protect Malaysia's sovereignty and interest throughout the advancement of effective diplomacy by a corps of world-class diplomats. This ministry bears the responsibilities to conduct Malaysia's foreign relations with other countries and also develop foreign policy and advise the government on international affairs. The example of agencies under this ministry such are Department of Pl Policy Planning and Coordination and also National Authority for Chemical Weapons Convention. Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs MDTCA of KPD and HEP is a ministry under YB Datuk Sri Alexander Nantalinghi. And he was supported by the Deputy Minister, namely YB Datuk Rasul Wahid. The objective of the ministry is to promote the development of a viable, competitive and sustainable domestic economy, specifically in the distributive trade sector. The ministry carries out these, its functions by control and monitor the sales and distributions of essential goods, petroleum, petrochemical products and direct selling trade. The, other than that, this ministry also uh, involved in regulate matters pertaining to co uh, companies and business based on the related act. The example of uh, agencies under this ministry are such Companies Commission of Malaysia, SSM, and Malaysian Intellectual Property Corporation, my equal. Ministry of Housing and Local Government. Minister for this ministry are Datuk Sri Reza Marikai and Deputy Minister is YB Datuk Sri Dr. Haji Ismail. The function of this ministry is to provide adequate affordable housing development uh, to the qualified. The objective of this ministry is to ensure that the concept of planning for urban and rural areas can be achieved. 
uh, some of the departments under this ministry are the town and country planning department and fire and rescue department of Malaysia. Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. YB Datuk Sri Dr. Adil Hambaba was appointed Minister for this Ministry and assisted by the Deputy Minister YB Datuk Haji Ahmad Amzai. The function of this ministry is to carry out development in terms of research and scientific development for the country. The objective of this ministry is to achieve the goal of becoming a high-tech country. The departments under this ministry are the Department of Chemistry Malaysia and the Malaysian Academy of Science. Ministry of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperative. Minister for this ministry are YB Tan Sri Noor and YB Tuan Muslimi is Deputy Minister. The function of this ministry is always to provide various assistance, support service and development for entrepreneurship. The objective of this ministry is to provide an infrastructure that can help and encourage more in the entrepreneur development. So, the department and agencies in this ministry is the Malaysian Cooperative Commission and Bank Rakyat. Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Minister for this ministry are YB Datuk Sri Hajar Nancy, YYB Datuk Sri Dr. Santara Kumar as a Deputy Minister. The function of this ministry is to further enhance the promotion of the uniqueness of art, culture and heritage that exists in Malaysia. Next, the objective of this ministry is to further promote cultural arts to the people so that this existing heritage can be maintained. Therefore, the department under this ministry are the Malaysian Tourism Promotion Board and the National Heritage Department. Ministry of National Unity. Minister for this ministry are YB Datuk Halimah and YB Senator Tuan Wan Ahmad Faisal as the Deputy Minister. The function of this ministry is to always improve all aspects available to achieve mutual prosperity among the communities. For the objective of this ministry is to strengthen the relationship of unity between the people in the country. It is to ensure that relations between the people are always in a harmonious state. The department under this ministry is the Department of National Unity and National Integration. Ministry of Youth and Sports. Minister for this ministry are YB Datuk Sri Ahmad Faizal Azumu, YYB Senator Datuk Sri Tian Ker is the Deputy Minister. The function of this ministry is to ensure that the development of sports in the country can grow to the international level because with the available exposure from abroad can further increase the development of sports toward a more productive. The next objective of this ministry is to develop a society that practice a healthy and active lifestyle. So, the departments under this ministry are the National Youth and Sports Department and the National Sports Institute. Ministry of Plantation Industry and Commodities. Minister for this ministry are YB Datuk Hajar Suraida Kamarudin and YB Datuk Willy Anak Mongin as Deputy Minister 1 and YB Datuk Sri Dr. Wijasen as Deputy Minister 2. The function of this ministry is to further enhance the development of agriculture towards a balance and increase in productivity. The objective of this ministry is to make nature an excellent centre in terms of research and development in the advancements of technology and service. So, the departments under this ministry are the Malaysian Palm Oil Board and the Malaysian Rubber Board. In conclusion, can be summarized that all ministries that have been organized by our Prime Minister have different roles and functions in managing the governance of the country. It is hoped that all the ministries will be able to carry out their responsibilities and functions as much as possible so that the main mission of the government wish to serve the public will be achieved. In addition, periodic surveys should be conducted by the elected representative to detect the problems that the citizens face without expecting them to find and report their problem first. Lastly, we are hoping that all the efforts that have been made by all parties will be able to make our country more developed, peaceful and prosperous. Alright, ya Allah panjang betul ni eh. Ah uh, 22. Total loss ni tempat tinggal tak ada, kereta eh. tak ada, semua tak ada. Ini. Seperti mana kelas? Ah uh, 22 minit ah uh, maybe lah sebab apa? Panjang sangat tu. Sebab kementerian pun banyak. Banyak betul menteri Malaysia eh. Ah uh, sampai alah sampai ada dua dua pula timbalan menteri. Ah uh, itu menjadikan ini antara kabinet 
terbesar yang Malaysia pernah ada eh. So comment madam, biasalah pronunciation. Ah especially yang last tu siapa entah ya Allah hai. Okey. So when the expertise, how you pronounce expertise? Expertise. Ah dengan expertise is not expertise eh. Expertise. This expertise. Development. 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 Okay. Further. 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 Please, ya. Yeah. Uh, orang sahabat ke? Yang lu, jangan further. Bukan further, ya. Yeah. Okay, so banyak lah, ya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, benda nak kamu check. Okay, especially yang last presenter tu tadi. Uh, terdapat banyak uh, pronunciation. Okay. Okay. Oh, itu buat pronunciation lah. But then in terms of Madam tengok apa uh, dari segi uh, uh, video ni cukup lah. Wah, cukup menenangkan lah maknanya walaupun 22 minit uh, teratur dan cantik lah sebenarnya. Jadi kita tengok pun taklah sakit hati. Hai Muizuddin ada dah? Tadi pergi mana? Sorry Madam. Dah tak problem. Ha? Dah tak problem Madam. Letter problem. Oh, okay. Saya tak boleh buka tadi. You future hang. Ah, okay tak apa. Okay lepas tu uh, macam and then tersusun. Okay walaupun macam lama kita macam rasa uh, 10 minit yang awal tu kita tak terasa lagi. So kita macam tengok cantik and then tersusun. And then kita pun yelah kita pun tak hafal sangat lah sebab cabinet pun asyik berubah-rubah kan. Uh, especially dia punya orang kata portfolio dalam tu. Okey tapi bila kita tengok tu kita dapat okey lah at least sikit sebanyak dapat masuk dalam kepala kita uh, list of uh, cabinet. Okey uh, list of cabinet members atau portfolio. Ha, yang tu yang paling penting ya. Nama siapa menteri siapa tu itu tak penting sebab ini berubah-ubah. Yang penting dia portfolio tu. Okey so it's time for me to give marks lah. Okey. Dia biasalah buat presentation. Tapi baju madam puji lah. Ha, kemas berbeza ya. Eh? So cabinet, cabinet. Alright. Okay so nanti tulis nama kat sini. Okay. Alright so the introduction is uh, very good. Okay. Okay. And then the key concept pun uh, very good. Transitions. Ha, ini benda yang empat lah kot. Ha, sebab kita pun tiba-tiba ada juga SJS tiba-tiba habis ha, macam tu. Conclusion dia pun ha, okay sebab cakap lah kenapa ada Menteri Kabinet ramai-ramai tu sebab ni. In general, mana nak pergi berapa ya. Okay, mana bagi empat lah sebab kalau presentation dia tapi dia macam lebih kepada baca berita lah. Ha, okay, ada yang macam presentation presenter yang, yang mana yang perspek tu Uh, lebih kepada macam macam pandang bawah ha. Saya tak nampak mata tu Nampaklah membacanya So maybe dia harap kamu semua boleh improve lah ya. So berapa boleh kita bagi makan ni 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23 ha. Banyak tu 23 Alright So kamu semua boleh buat untuk ni Cuba jangan panjangkan sangat So takkanlah 32 page kan Okay So make sure kamu buat satu page tu Dua kementerian ha. So Uh, masa tadi pun okay tapi janganlah buat dalam bentuk point. Make sure you make it in essay form lah. Okay. The function apa semua tu. Alright. Okay untuk seterusnya Madam nak kamu take attendance untuk you future uh, dekat you future. Okay. Group tu okay ke dengan markah tu? Okay, okay. Madam. Okay, Alright. Madam. Alright. So boleh take attendance yang ni. Yang ni. Tengok yang ni pula. Uh, semua dah tik ke? Kau ada yang lalai tak tik? Alhamdulillah semua dah tik Alhamdulillah ya Okay so Mada rasa untuk kelas yang ni uh, Kita uh, rehat sekejap bagi kamu peluang untuk tik attendance And then kita semayang isyak dulu ke apa Boleh ke? Boleh madam Boleh madam Okay, okay semayang isyak dulu ya Okay sebenarnya kita continue
Assalamualaikum semua. Ah, jomlah kita habiskan presentation yang terakhir ni. Lepas tu kita rehatlah letih juga eh. Bila dengar dua tiga presentation ni. Okay. Group 3. Sekejap. Ni wabarakatuh. Eh. Dah wabarakatuh dah. Sekejap. Terima kasih. Okay. We are from group 3 and today we are going to present to you the topic for our assignment group which is Dewan Rakyat is one house in Malaysian Parliament and we will discuss about its membership, appointment, termination and issue. My name is Nur Amira Syamin binti Nurizan and my student ID is 7070463474. My name is Puteri Auli Binti Muhammad Zudi and my metric number is 2020808996. My name is Nur Hafizah Huda Binti Muhammad Nazri and my metric number is 2020496624. Hi, my name is Siti Salwa Binti Othman. My metric number is 2020613178 and I'm the leader of this group. First of all, what is Parliament? Parliament is the national legislature that practice parliamentary democracy. In Malaysia, Dewan Rakyat or also known as House of Representatives is the lower house in the parliament system that consists of the member from election. The member of parliament take responsibility by representing the people to state, contain and debate in the House of Parliament. Dewan Raya will discuss, pass and amend and repeal act of law that matter to all citizens to find way to improve national and public policy. Dewan Raya will prevent or approve the particular issues which have voice and received by the public attention and after that, the issue will be passed and reviewed by Dewan Negara in order to achieve certain objective for society. So, I will continue the presentation for the part of membership. The Dewan Rakyat has 222 members and each member represents one constituency. Members are chosen every five years on the basis of public support in elections. The party with the most seats in the House of Representatives will form the federal government which will rule the country. Next, the member are chosen by the election commission from federal district, which is every 10 years constituency boundaries are revised based on the most recent census. Each Dewan Rakyat served for a maximum of five years before being replaced by a general election. Voters choose a candidate to represent their constituency in the Dewan Rakyat in the general elections. Next, before holding any seats in parliament, each member must take an oath in front of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Such member must swear or promise to carry out their responsibilities as members of the House to the best of their ability, to be loyal to Malaysia, and to protect, defend, and enforce the Constitution. The members of Parliament are likewise prohibited from criticizing the King or the Judiciary. Uh, the requirement for membership in the Dewan Rakyat is firstly, he or she must be a Malaysian citizen, next, uh, must be 18 years old or older, and the third one, uh, he or she must be son of mine and not bankrupt. And the lastly is uh, the member who will be appointed must not be a uh, member of both the House of Representatives and the Senate at the same time. And lastly is the current membership of the Dewan Rakyat has been led by Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri bin Yaakob. So this is the current membership of the Dewan Rakyat. Yeah, the first one is Yang Dipertua Dewan Rakyat who is elected from among the members of the Dewan Rakyat. The responsibility uh, of 
again, the Pertulia Maraya is for overseeing the smooth running of the meeting and ensure that the debate complies with the rules of the House of Representatives. And he also uh, responsible to make decisions and interpretations on the rules of the meeting. The current speaker of the Dewarayat is YB Tan Sri Azha Azizan Harun. The second one is Timbalan Yang Dipertua Dewarayat. Uh, in the absence of the Yang Dipertua Dewarayat, um, the two deputy Yang Dipertua Dewarayat will assist the Yang Dipertua Dewarayat and chair the conference by rotation. The current deputy speaker of the House of Representatives is YB Datuk Haji Muhammad Rashid bin Hasrun. And the last one is a secretary of the House of Representatives. He is in charge of the Dewan Rakyat Cities and is the young deeper two of the Dewan Rakyat in all matters related to the Dewan Rakyat during the sittings. And he also responsible for sending conference notification, handy motion, pamphlets, the order, the order of business, words of proceedings of the meeting, and the others. The current Secretary of the House of Representatives, which has served since 13 May 2020 until now, is Dr. Nizam Maidin bin Baka Maidin. As we can see, this is the current composition in the Dewan Rakyat. Next, I will explain about the appointment of the Dewan Rakyat. All members of the Dewan Rakyat were selected through various party election system. Each member of the council represent an election area of the Dewan Rakyat or parliamentary constituencies. The area is determined by the electoral area which is conducted every eight years once it is recommended by the election commission. Before holding any seat in a parliament, each member is required to take an oath in front of the speaker of the Dewan Rakyat. The practices that are always made in this country are either at the federal and state levels. The appointment of the Dewan Rakyat and their two deputies need to be obtained the consent of the board. In Article 57 Clause 1, the Federal Constitution provides that the Dewan Rakyat shall from time to time choose. Uh, the first one is a President of the Dewan Rakyat, whether a member of the Dewan Rakyat or eligible to be elected to be such a member. The second one is the Dewan Rakyat also need to choose a two deputy president from among the members of the Dewan Rakyat. There are also rules of the Peraturan Peraturan Majlis Mesyuarat Dewan Rakyat which must be complied for the appointment of the President of the Dewan Rakyat. In terms of the selection rules of the Speaker, it is clearly stipulated under the Regulation 4 which is the Regulations of the Dewan Rakyat. Between the assent or the conditions stated under the Regulations of the Dewan Rakyat on the Speaker's election rules are as follows. The first one is the names to be nominated by any member of the Dewan Rakyat must be approved by the candidate. The second one is the names must be submitted to the Dewan Rakyat at least 14 days before its first meeting begins. Thirdly is during the nomination session, a member of the relevant Dewan Rakyat shall propose the name verbally and be followed by the support without any debate or discussion. Next, if only one nominated, the secretary, or we call it as um, Setia Usaha of the Dewan Rakyat, shall declare the name of the candidate that he has been elected. And lastly, but if there is more than one candidate, then the election will be made through a written vote that states the choice through the ballot papers among the members of the Dewan Rakyat. The a deputy president also needs to be appointed and he needs to be elected among the members of the Dewan Rakyat itself. The role, the role played by the speaker or the president of the Dewan Rakyat and its two deputies is very important so that all the matters in the house can be implemented in accordance with all the prescribed rules and procedures as well as to prevent the atmosphere in the council being chaotic. 
termination is the procedure through which a person is disqualified from participating in either house of the legislature. Based on the Article 48, a person is disqualified from being a member of parliament if he is and has been found or declared to be of unsound mind. He holds an office of profit. He is an undischarged bankrupt. He has failed to lodge any return of election expenses required within time and manner required. He has been convicted of an offence by a court of law in the Federation and sentenced to imprisonment not less than one year or fine 2,000 ringgit and not receive a free pardon. He has voluntarily acquired citizenship of other country. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, a person also will be terminating from becoming a member of House of Legislature if they are already reached the end of term. Based on Clause 3, Article 45 of the Federal Constitution, the Dewan Rakyat sits for a maximum of five years and dissolves on its own. This is because the power of dissolution is at the discretion of the Yang Dipertuan Agong. Yang Dipertuan Agong play a big role in the termination or dissolution of parliament in Malaysia. In this matter, Yang Dipertuan Agong has the absolute power in convening a sitting of parliament, the prorogation of parliament and the dissolution of parliament. There are a number of conditions that allow for early dissolution. In this matter, early dissolution can be held if the Prime Minister has lost the confidence and faith of the majority of members of the Assembly. Other than that, it may be possible to resolve conflict between the executive and the legislature, either a snap election called by an executive seeking to increase legislative support, or an election triggered by parliament refusing to give the government confidence and supply. When the assembly reach the end of maximum term or maybe early dissolution that possibly can happen in the parliamentary system, the legislative assembly dissolution will require for all of its members to resign at the same time. This dissolution hope that a new and improved legislature would assemble later with perhaps different member of parliament. After the dissolution of the Warayat, a new government formation can be established by the party or coalition of parties with the most seats won in the Dewan Rakyat. By election also possibly can happen and will be held exclusively to replace vacancies in the Dewan Rakyat. In this matter, if a member of parliament is required to resign while serving in the Dewan Rakyat or less than two years before the parliament is dissolved, a by-election must be called to re replace the vacancy and the leader of the House of uh, Representatives has confirmed that the ruling party majority support has been damaged. Then, the first issues of Dewan Rakyat is Party hoping. After the 14th general election on 9 May 2018, the number of members of parliament who involved in political nomanism, which is also known as party hopping, increased to 39 people, which make that the largest number of party hopping record in history over the past 16 years. This issue happened because lack of enforcement in Malaysian law and many people considering that jumping the party as a freedom of association in the federal constitution. The reason why they choose to jump the party are because their own political party are threatened and have no longer power to hold to be a part of member of parliament, so they will changing the party to the strong one and support government party that won the election to continue the influence in politics. For example, after Pakatan Harapan won 14 general election, many non-government party, which is opposition members, started to change their party to support party in government, which is Pakatan Harapan at that time. 
Next, the second issue is Proclamation of Emergency. Proclamation of Emergency by Yang Di-Pertuan Agong, Al-Sultan Abdul Wariah Tudin Al-Mustafa Billah on 12 January 2021 has suspended the constitution and the executive body take an action to determine the administration related to the law and expenditure of the country. A direct and indirect declaration of emergency would give more special power to the ruler, including those are relating to the rules and affairs of the parliament. During Sabah election, when the pandemic is still not over, positive cases were, was increasing, which give a huge implication to the people's health and political process. Government immediately take an action to postpone the election due to outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. All laws that have been created during emergency would be repealed when the emergency is over under the authority of the magistrate. Member of Parliament need to present the law again that have been repealed in Parliament for re-enactment. The third issue is changing Prime Minister frequently. After the 14th election in 2018, which is won by Pakatan Harapan, the country, which is Malaysia, has facing the political crisis which has gone through two government transition and two changes of Prime Minister. In February 2020, Tun Dr. Mahathir bin Mohamad has resigned as Prime Minister after 22 months hold the power. Dewan Rakyat is given the opportunity to decide who will be the next Prime Minister after a sudden resignation by Tun Mahathir bin Mohamad. Therefore, Pakatan Harapan uh, were replaced with the Perikatan Nasional under Tan Sri Datuk Muhyiddin bin Muhammad Yassin after gaining a majority support in Parliament to be the next Prime Minister. However, the administration of Perikatan Nasional lasts only 18 months when Tan Sri Datuk Muhyiddin Yassin resigned as Prime Minister on 16 August 2021 due to loss of majority support in Parliament. Cabinet of Muhyiddin Yassin has dissolved as the Prime Minister resigned. Due to the Cabinet dissolution, a new Cabinet has been established formed through a change of government which is called the Cabinet of Ismail Sabri that was formed on 13 August 2021 to replace the dissolved Cabinet. So, in conclusion, both chambers of parliament are really important in our nation since they both play an important role in representing the people's rights. Both legislatures are, are responsible for passing, amending, and repealing legislation that have been agreed upon. The Dewan Rakyat serves as a focal point for people's priorities and seeks to enhance national and also public policies. The, the Dewan Rakyat responsible as the representative that has been elected by Rakyat to become the middle person between the government and people. Okay, thank you group 3. So, Madam macam impress lah sebab dia sangat tara. Tara ni orang kata menyeluruh lah. Okay, menyeluruh uh, dan sangat orang kata uh, alah, informatif lah, very informatif. So, and then uh, mereka jawab soalan dengan betul and then banyak 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 information yang kita boleh belajar actually ya eh, dalam ni okey kita boleh bagi markah lah so kamu semua ambil kat mana eh? template tu macam elok eh macam lawa je mana tengok okey okey so thank you dah tulis nama pun okay, introduction is good kan key okay, concept is good the transition is good okey 
Conclusion pun bagus. Secara general pun dia nak bagi ah, cuma transition lah kot kan. Transition pun bagus juga sebenarnya. Tak apa. Okey lah nak bagi 24 per 25 sebab bagus eh. Tak boring lah maknanya orang kata walaupun dia agak panjang tetapi informatif. Dia macam banyak. Dia banyak benda yang kita macam oh macam ni macam ni okey. So that's good lah. Alright. So Mera rasa tak apalah kelas kita tangguh dulu. So okey ke group ni group 3 for the marks? Okey madam. Thank you madam. Alright. <laughs> Okay, ambil syarul, laju je nice. Okay semua rasanya kita kena tidur dah ni kurs sembilan setengah ya. Azam baru nak tidur awal sebelum kurs sepuluh. Okay semua terima kasih sebab hadir pada kelas malam ni. Jangan lupa tiap attendance, ada dua attendance. Okay kita jumpa minggu depan insya Allah. Okay semua Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih. Okay. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Mida. Haa, tengok tu. Waalaikumsalam, Mida. Bye. Mida rindu kampus ke, Mida? Rindu. <laughs> Ramai positif lah sekarang, Mida. Itulah, Mida dengar. Kenapa macam nak boleh positif tiba-tiba tu? Uh, sebab ni, ramai student datang dia masuk dulu baru oh, RTK. Allah. Hmm. Tak apalah buat macam tu. RTK kan murah je sekarang. RM59 je. Oh, Itulah. Kalau kata nak jadi kita masuk ikut tu. Ikut tarikh dia orang. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Kamu duduk mana sekarang? Saya dekat TDM. Yang banyak kes sekarang dekat TA dengan TA. Oh jauhkan diri lah. Jauhkan diri lah. Risau pula <laughs> kan. Ha, okay tadi lah. pun risau juga tadi Madam. Ada kontak rapat kita orang tadi. Sebab Yalah. ada semalam saya jumpa dengan yang positif. Tapi masih baiklah tak ada apa-apa. Yelah sekadang kalau ah kalau kita jumpa positif kat tempat-tempat yang bukan bilik okey. Ah. Nak ni? Ha? Nak ni? Ah, okey semua. Assalamualaikum. Jaga diri Selamat semua ya. Eh. Especially kat college. Bye Asyarul Ashraf. Izzat. Okey bye Muiz. Salam, Madam. Bye, Madam. Take care, Madam. Bye, Madam. Bye. Bye.